Eureka! Greetings, Internet. Uh, I've made a few posts recently on the subject of a new blockchain project, which a white paper is available for, and it's out of South Korea as far as I know. It's called Decentinet, and the idea is that it's uh, effectively replacing the mechanisms used for, to make the Internet work. Uh, the idea being that it, uh, it's going to basically put the power of the internet back in the hands of the people and out of the hands of various corporations, at least that's the theory. Uh, this is going to be done by uh, using software that kind of makes a secondary network that runs through the existing hardware infrastructure of the internet, but which is encrypted and which has its own kind of rules and um, uh, it's more of a community project. And this is actually backed by ARPANET. Um, who are the original kind of creators of the internet and who are actually, as it turns out, I kind of knew this but didn't know the full story, they are basically the American military. Um, so this project is backed by the American military, um, DARPA, which is, um, you may have heard, uh, the American sort of research arm of the military in a sense that have been seen to be making all these various robots that can kill, that mimic animals and so on. Um, they are, that's basically just ARPA. Uh, with a D on the end, for, I think that's defence from memory, so it's ARPA, so ARPANET, the original kind of name of the early internet, is basically a defence um, project. So they're actually backing this, interestingly, and they're saying the original vision for the internet was not one that was dominated by corporations, where corporations got to decide what information was shared and so on, and basically Decentinet offers a solution to that, and so they're backing it, that's the basic message. And that all sounds fine. Um, However, when you read some of my blogs, you'll see you know, there are issues with that. For example, um, the exact mechanisms dis used to um, ensure privacy and net neutrality and other um, key requirements for a good internet um, are not really explained fully in the, in the white papers I've seen. Uh, they do mention that there's going to be more technical documents coming, and I've got no reason to doubt that. Uh, I just made the point that from a perspective of privacy, um, the various spying agencies effectively have um, technology at the ISP level um, which mirrors and kind of takes all the data that's fed through that system and um, I don't really see that there's any guarantee that, that they aren't going to be able to hack that just like they've hacked probably just about every other form of um, privacy ensh enshrining software. Um, there are documents that state that at the actual encryption um, involved in encrypting data involving highly complicated uh, large number mathematics um, hasn't been cracked. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's the claim that's made. However, the protocols involved in maintaining and ensuring that information is encrypted are quite regularly kind of hacked in one way or another, and I don't really see any guarantee that anything that Decentinet's doing can, can ensure that that isn't happening, basically, because if you've got a highly funded, highly motivated group with direct access to a, a data stream, in my opinion, it's only a matter of time before they find a way around any security protocols. So, um, with that in mind, that's one of my concerns, and you know, it'd be good to hear these internet's response to that and their explanation for how they intend to um, protect us from that concern. And one of the reasons why I'm so motivated to talk about this is that. A, the American military is supporting it. B, lots of other people are supporting it because it actually, on the surface, looks like a good idea. Um, and C, well, these concerns regarding privacy mean that if we don't really address them and, and have all talk about them, basically have a full understanding of them, it would be quite possible that lots of people jump on board with this project, fund it, and think that they're going to be getting a completely safe and sound, advanced internet, whereas in reality they've kind of set a trap for themselves where they've got a full sense of security, much like they had before Edward Snowden and other people, other whistleblowers, told them the extent of the spying that's been done against them. Uh, you know, most people weren't really so concerned or even aware that they were being spied on to the extent that they are, um, with major corporate websites basically being allowed through the terms and conditions, for example, to record voice and video from your phones and cameras, even when you're not aware. And for the various... Uh, surveillance authorities and groups and secret so uh, services and so on being able to actually tap into that information without many times without even needing to go through hardly any or any processes of validation or kind of checks and balances. So, in short, 
the current situation is that with our internet is that you have no privacy at all really um, despite the technologies being involved um, to attempt to give you some maybe some of it than others but the bare bones technology that we have without you doing anything special really means you've got no privacy at all um, and so for a long time the American military and other groups were very happy with that situation and they were able to happily spy on everyone without them even knowing um, and then when various whistleblowers came out telling everyone, oh, actually, by the way, this is happening, you have no privacy, obviously then lots of people started to lose trust in the internet and would therefore not, presumably, not be sharing such private and useful information over the web. They'd find other ways to do it. So if you think about it, what better way for the surveillance groups to bring back their or increase their ability to spy on people than to increase the public's perception of safety and trust in the internet again and for them to start using it again in an unlimited way meanwhile they actually are still being spied on so any technology basically regardless of who promotes it where it came from that claims to be completely revolutionary completely bringing back all your rights and, and freedoms on the internet and it even goes as far as to saying basically is going to guarantee the delivery of world peace um, so when they're making bold claims like that they deserve to be scrutinized in the deepest possible way and i wouldn't say i've done it as deeply as possible because i don't have the time or resources to do that it would really need quite a lot of eyes on this but um i have looked at it to an extent that's unusual for me and i certainly don't feel confident that i can say that this project is going to be able to deliver what it says it or claims to be delivering um, that said, it is still an interesting project and I will still be watching for what they do with it and it will be great if they did achieve their goals. Um, obviously, there's nothing... I can't see any real downside to, to what they're talking about other than these security holes and maybe the devil is in the details with regards to how policies are made um, and the decisions that might be made by the designers of the system, maybe how that's going to influence free will and the flow of data and so on. But um, all of that is yet to be decided, so I can't really comment on it. Um, so yeah, I, one of the reasons why I'm making this video after having made four blogs on this already um, is that in essence I posted links to my blogs to the Decent Internet Telegram group to get some feedback from their team to see um, what they thought of my comments. Um, specifically the last post I made which was actually going into quite a lot of depth regarding the esoteric, metaphysical and slightly dubious aspects to their white paper. Um, this is the only white paper I've ever seen which says channeled by and then lists the CEO instead of written by the CEO. So he's, I mean, he's, whether he means he's channeling that from another level of spirit consciousness, from another planet, from another uh, entity somewhere, or whether he just means he's channeling his own enthusiasm, I don't really know. But um, And I also don't know whether he's just put that in, that in there to look exciting or whether he really is channeling in, in, a, in a sort of true spiritual channeling sense. Um, but because of that and the logo that they use, which is a macabre, which is a sacred geometrical form, which is, has very um, significant spiritual implications, um, this really grabs my attention. It's not often, in fact, I can't think of a single example in, in all of my studying of technology and so on that I can say that I've seen such a bringing together of metaphysical ideas and technology in, um, in a public published way like this. So. When I see all of this together and it being backed by the American military, ultimately, that's quite concerning. Um, so given the history of the American military and the amount of double-think, denial, misdirection, lies, murder, borderline genocide that they've been involved with over a very long period, um, I think we're right to be very sceptical of this and to look into it as deeply as possible. So um, the last post, as I say, included a lot of comments on, on that kind of thing, going into... Egyptian mythology, even because of the name of their operating system, is Anubis, and it sounds very much like Anubis, which was a uh, alleged Egyptian god character, gateway to the afterworld, if I remember correctly. And um, there's there's several sort of keywords like their browser called Osiris, which is another key um, character from Egyptian symbology and mythology. So they've got a very strong tie to the ancient Egyptian culture and belief systems, potentially even. Uh, so again, that's something that's questionable in that, again, the American military, um, as far as I know, have used these code words before for projects which relate to psychic research um, and other, other sort of subjects which many people would find strange for them to be working with, but they are. 
So with all of this in mind, um, I made a blog post going into all of this and as I said I shared it with the Telegram group for Decentinet and gave it a couple of days and eventually someone wrote a comment back. Um, I found that the general kind of air of um, communication in this group to be slightly odd. It wasn't really a um, what I would class to be a serious, even vaguely serious, scientific or creative platform or space. It seemed to be more like a bunch of kind of excited teenagers, um, my cheerleaders basically, just constantly posting smiley happy memes and saying woo, everything's great. Um, you know, it's fine to be excited, but this is quite a serious project. It's not, we're not inventing, you know, a new type of chewing gum. You know, it's, we're replacing the internet. It's quite a big deal. Um, so, or well, at least the idea is to replace the internet. Um, the structure and um, methodology used in within key parts of the internet. So, eventually then I did get a reply from someone. I don't know whether this person is involved with the project or not. Obviously, they're quite involved with the Telegram group. Basically saying, I've just read this post, linking to the last one I asked them to read, with all this um, critique and interesting observations that I made about the project. And and basically just said, yeah, you're a soul. You, I, I said, everyone reads this, it's so great that he really likes our project and he's totally behind what we're doing. That's not what the blog said. So either they didn't read the blog, or I, they're just trying to spin it and for their own reasons, their own logic, trying to make things look better than they are, in a sense, and, and sort of hand wave away from the difficult questions. But... Um, basically I wasn't very impressed with that at all and it's unfortunately reinforcing my concerns rather than actually helping me get to the truth of the situation. So yeah that's all I basically have, have had from them. I, after a few days you know they said oh great thanks for you know posting all these blogs and lots of other people have posted blogs they've written in there as well telling them about them and they're very excited that the word spreading and so on which is understandable but you know at some point they have to start to um, take the ball by the horns so to speak and deal with these difficult issues um, directly and the sooner the better because otherwise they're they're not going to be looking good in the eyes of people who actually understand the situation deeply so um, it's my suggestion to them would be to you know don't take this as an insult or an attack or it's not meant to be um, again I kind of I do respect the intention stated in the project I like many of the ideas in the project um, but when you're talking about literally replacing Google Amazon eBay Uber um, all of the world's biggest internet companies and the entire system of the in infinite, internet and promising to end, you know, war on the planet, basically, and solve basically all the world's problems with your project, then you, you need to be super, super serious, super focused and super diligent in your monitoring and response to the comments that you get. And that's not what I'm saying. It's not even close to what I'm saying. And, and you know, some of the comments I received on my blog post were basically saying, um, yeah, this looks like a scam. It looks like a, um, like a kind of pump and dump or an, an ICO scam where they're just promising the world and then they're going to get loads of money and then they won't deliver it. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. I have no idea. Um, I think the fact that ARPANET behind this means that it, it is probably more than that. Um, I don't think they would be uh, getting behind a project that had no credibility in that sense. So I just have to wonder exactly what the real intention is here and um, it would be really good if those involved would clarify that and, and specifically address the specific points that I'm making. Um, that would help me at least personally and people that follow me um, maybe feel a bit more comfortable with the project, maybe want to be involved, maybe want to help it out. Uh, you know, My skills cover social networking, software engineering, uh, systems architecture, sociology, psychology, healing, balancing, study of history, you know, you name it pretty much. I, I, I've put a significant amount of time into it uh, in terms of the things that affect this project or the, the ideas behind this project. So um, certainly if I felt this project was genuinely going to really help humanity, I would be putting some time into helping it and maybe helping fund it and so on. So um, yeah, uh, if you haven't read my blog post, uh, I'm going to put links to those under this video. So um, it's a chance for you to go back and read them. Um, get your head around exactly what Decentinet is and why I'm saying what I'm saying and what I have said. And um, yes, yeah, keep your eyes posted here and maybe even in the Decentinet Telegram room for more updates and I'll let you know if I hear any more. So until next time, uh, may we all know unconditional love and balance and well-being. Cheers. <laughs>